Welcome to a program I'm doing with my good friend Val Tignini. We're calling it Something Out There. Yes, Something Out There. And this is a focus on UFO ET consciousness. It's part of my series, New Realities. And what's your series? My series? Yeah, what's well, your? Well, I have a website called ValSecrets.com. Mm -hmm. So we both tapped into this other level of consciousness and we want to talk about what that means to um, to people as far as getting messages from a kind of higher level and integrating that into this world. So maybe you could start a little bit, and I'll tell my story, but how did you connect with this thing we're calling ET consciousness, if that's what it is? It might be something else entirely, but what... You were you were an actress, and then you had an awakening. Tell people what actually happened to you. Oh, I was I was uh, always um, kind of tuned to this other world, but never made a big deal out of it. I had an experience when I was about mm, I want to say fourteen. And right. I had a UFO come to my window. Oh, you did? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yes. And did you think it was weird? Um, no. You didn't. A UFO, a ship, actually. Came a ship, to. but it was the size of like one of those Bozu balls, you know, those exercise mm -hmm. balls. It's like a smaller ship, um, which I think, uh, you know, I, I I didn't think it was a UFO until I felt the energy of it. it was what was the energy? Because I, I think I, I want to do this series so people can start to relate in their own lives if they're getting sort of those impressions. So what mm -hmm. was the energy that you felt? Mm. Oh, my gosh, that was hot. Mm -hmm. Sorry. That's okay. That's okay. We're just having tea with We're a bunch just... of people listening. That's okay. So, um, so. so, I mean, essentially, energy is is not from this world. But what did it feel like? It's very static, mm -hmm. but also electric to the point where your body doesn't know what to do with the energy. Mm -hmm. So... Everything starts kind of moving faster. It feels like your heart's... Um, like an acceleration? Oh, your heart's being that? But yeah, cause, yeah, everything's like pumping faster. Yeah. Maybe your eyes are moving faster. Actually, I have felt that in contact with other beings. It's like my whole body's vibrating. Vibrating. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that happened to you when you were 14. Mm -hmm. and, but, um, but then you forgot about it. Yeah, I forgot about it. And then um, like 15 years later... Yes. Um, I had a, this experience where I had Kundalini awakening, and then after that, I, I had contact. Right. The Kundalini awakening is quite a dramatic story. Here, move over this Actually, way. Actually, Alan, the first, time, mm -hmm. the first time I had contact with physical beings was mm -hmm. when I went to go see you in um, Connecticut. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. I was giving a lecture on remote viewing with Colin Andrews mm -hmm. and... When did you have what happened? When when did that happen though during that visit? Well, I don't know if you remember. We got into a car accident after. Oh, we had a little fender bender. Yes. Yeah. And it was very. It was a small thing. Yeah, it was a small thing. Yes. But I don't know if you remember. I gave the woman a rose. Mm hmm And she got all freaked out. And the police officer took me to the side and goes, "She's not like you." Mm -hmm. And I looked at him. I was like, "What do you mean by that?" Right. So anyway, when we went home, um, you know, everything was fine, but I still felt different. Actually, at the at the event, at, at when, the lecture, at yeah. the lecture, mm -hmm. Colin Andrews um, had a, had a slide where it had 4:44 p.m. Right, right. And it was exactly 4:44 p.m. Oh, when he yes, that was very synchronistic. During the lecture, he mentioned 4:44 p.m. when this ET contact came through. It was a slide that said 4:44, and there was actually 4:44. Mm -hmm. And seconds that was after, strange. I felt this blowing in my ear, which mm. was familiar to me when I was a kid. When when my sister and I both had that experience, one day after another. Did um, she see the ship too, your sister? She didn't, oh. but she felt that, and mm -hmm. um, and I was like, oh, that wasn't a ghost, because we thought it was a ghost, mm -hmm. but it was actually an ET. What? So anyway, fast forward, that night, mm -hmm. two tall beings came into my room. The night after that lecture? The, that night. That night. That, that night. night. And, and did they say anything to you? Absolutely. I mean, they took me up. They took me up. My physical body? Mm -hmm. Was I think still in the in the bed, mm -hmm. but my my astral body mm -hmm. 
was floating up and it went up into where some movie called Sirius. How did you know it was Sirius? I didn't know then, but I had to do research afterwards to, like, to see what it was because it went into... I saw this crystal city and, um, you know, these beings, and I didn't know where I was. Nobody said, you're welcome to Sirius. It wasn't like this, you know. <laughs> welcome. There was no signpost that said, welcome to Sirius. No, no. <laughs> but that was a vibrational shift. So the, the shift sort of happened during the lecture. Something got ignited for you. And then, you see, I think when people open to synchronicities, you start to realize that there's an interconnection throughout the universe and and that um ignites a different part of the brain that's my theory about it well speaking of the brain um so this crystal city mm -hmm. was um basically in a in a formation of that looked like the brain it did i couldn't see it from that maybe point you of went view. into your own brain Maybe that was... Well, you know, whatever's outside is inside. Whatever's inside is outside. Oh, you but, actually... Yeah, yeah. So, but the point is, is that um, after I left... After you came back home. After I came back to, home to, yeah, to into you. my body, mm -hmm. the only thing I came back with was this, was this phrase, higher consciousness. And mind you, I didn't understand this terminology. You didn't know what that meant point. at no, all. No, at all. So... I was like, what does that mean? What does that mean? So, I, of course, mm -hmm. the first thing I do is Google. And I relate to things through images. Mm -hmm. So, I go straight to Google Images. And the and I'm scrolling down. And I see this um, painting of this woman. She created this diamond shape that's kind of like this. And I was like, wow, that's exactly what I saw. So, the diamond shape was an image for you of higher consciousness. Right. Because mm -hmm. what when I left my body, I, I had... It felt like I had them holding my hands and we were floating into this diamond shape, which had a, like a platform in the middle of the diamond. So it kind of looked like the diamond was cut in half. Mm -hmm. And there were two beings waiting for us at this platform. And I and we were walk going into this diamond shape. And it was like and that's the that was the the, the serious world, the star, you know, the star world. And have you been back to that world? And has it was it the same sort of no, no you haven't been back there? No. But, but but do you remember the other? <laughs> it's always with you, Alan. <laughs> I don't know. Well, some people say I'm connected, but I don't know. No. I, I I feel beings, but what? Well, when? do you remember that one night that you like, Are, you know, doing something to my head, mm -hmm. and then what happened was um we I, that night I said I'm gonna have I'm gonna have um, oh you did say that you're touching my you're you're touching That's an antenna mean. yeah and what happened to you that and night? that night I had these beings mm -hmm. again come come to me, but now it was different because. I had my eyes closed, and all of a sudden, the moment I closed my eyes, I saw this kaleidoscope, kind of look like like a like you're going into a diamond mm. kaleidoscope, and like the diamond again. Yes, and then it went, but it, this time it was like a circular kaleidoscope diamond, mm. and I'm going into that, I'm like, oh my god, this is so amazing. Why do I keep my eyes open? And, I'm mm. like, and then as as I'm going traveling through this, um, there were two beings there again waiting mm. for me. And they said to me, now you're ready for the next level of consciousness. Mm. And they were telling me, you're, re you're receiving diamond consciousness. Wow. Well, I was working on the crown chakra just as an experiment to see if something would happen if I put some energy through mm. the crown and see if it would be activated. The pineal, because the pineal gland sits inside the skull below the crown. And when there's energy sent there, it opens up higher than visible light vision. So I guess that experiment worked then because... Um, totally worked. <laughs> but Everything but, works on me. <laughs> but yeah, because you're awakened. And that's why I, I want to do more shows with you because I uh, feel you have access to something beyond your personality, beyond your mm -hmm. conscious mind, beyond what you even know you're you're like an antenna mm -hmm. and um it also inspires me to tap into that part of myself so my et experiences haven't been as lucid as yours i mean i get a sense of what might be what we say out there but um they're still very vague you know i'm still maybe too 
much of mind in this world, but you've had other contact too when you were at that retreat, right? Yeah, so I, I have retreats and I have and I call the ETs in. But mm-hmm. I also I also call them in at the obelisk in New York Can you City. call them in now? <laughs> uh, no, it's okay. Too much pressure. <laughs> I mean, it's possible, but... <laughs> no, okay. But tell me what happens when they show up, because different beings show up for you, right? Yeah, yeah. Syrians, Pleiadians, Octorians. What's the difference between Syrians and Pleiadians? Is there a difference? or is Not it just... really. No? Mm-mm. Not yeah. really. But the thing is, Pleiadians are more humanoid. Mm-hmm. Uh, Syrians ha- are more mixed race, mm-hmm. from like reptilian to humanoid, and Palladians are mainly humanoid. But actually, the Palladians are the um, hybrid of a Syrian. Of the Syrians? Mm-hmm. The Palladians are hybrids of Syrians and they're, what? They're mixed Syrians with uh, uh, the Venusians. Oh, really? They're really Venusians? Mm-hmm. You so look they're very mixed. Venusian. I am. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a, l- I'm a little bit of both. But I think the reason I want to do this program, and maybe I'll also stream a gathering I'm calling an ET roundtable tonight, is that for me uh, also there's like um, consciousnesses that are sort of knocking on our door. And if we get out of the way, I feel we can receive messages. Like when I was with you the other time, I started to channel sort of um, a higher consciousness Mm -hmm. myself. You do. And I think it's all about channeling a higher consciousness is what we're here to activate as a planetary civilization. That's the excitement. I don't even know what those words mean, planetary civilization, (laughs) except that we're all connected. Yeah. We are, um, as Russell Targ was quoting, um, uh, what was he quoting? Um, Edwin Schrodinger the other night on Richard Dolan's podcast, he says that, um, Targ said about Schrodinger, that consciousness is a singular. There is no, there's not my consciousness and your consciousness. That's right. There's just consciousness. That's right. And when we close our eyes and tune into that inner place, that inner place for me is the same as that inner place for you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's the connection in consciousness. It's hard to understand that because we're in separate bodies. Mm-hmm. So how could we mm-hmm. share something so interior to ourselves? Mm-hmm. So a good example of that, I, I practice this with some of the people who come to my retreats or whatever. I tell them to look at the sun for three seconds with their eyes open. Then I tell them to close their eyes and still look at the sun with, with their eyes closed for three seconds. And then I ask every single one of them, what did they see? And they all see the same thing. What's that? Whatever that may be. Oh, it always, oh, oh. It's always changing because mm-hmm. the sun gives out different kinds of codes. Mm-hmm. But they all see the same exact thing, mm. which is the same consciousness. Right. I think codes are important here. There's many people like Carolyn Corey talk about codes and grid lines. I think we're being encoded with a higher frequency. Actually, that is another reason I wanted to have you here is because you do activate the frequency. You raise the vibration through your Kundalini awakening. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? Can you give us an example? (laughs) How do I do that? can Can you... raise the frequency oh, it's always to me see my vibrations always up and it just matters it just depends on who's around me and how they react to it mm-hmm. so and 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 basically it all has to do with your mind like how how open your heart is and how how much are you in your heart versus how much you're in your head right that's so, good so how do you get to your heart how do you get to your heart well yes. i mean that's why i tell people to kind of relax so then they their minds kind of shut shut off mm-hmm. or shut you know, down in a way, but uh, you to go to your heart is simple. You it, just feel. You just feel. Okay. <laughs> oh, is that it? Just feel. Stop thinking. Yeah. And feel. And what will that do? Okay, let, let's just do it right now. Okay, let's, let's just do it. Let's just see. Let's just do it. Okay. Yeah, I feel an expansion. Yeah, exactly. See, I know, I can tell exactly what the person's going through. Mm-hmm. I could, I could feel you energy coming here, mm-hmm. coming in here. Mm-hmm. I feel all that. 
So are you always open there? Always. You're always open. Even but with never stop. family situations, yes. drama. Even if I'm angry, it's still energy, the energy that's coming through. Is it? Yes. And that was a shift for you because you're Kundalini, right? Yes. So something just opened inside. Mm -hmm. And yeah, when I'm there and opening like this, it feels um, feels like an expansion. Mm -hmm. So if people are watching, and, and I, there are some people watching, what would you tell them? Same thing. Just kind mm -hmm. of drop whatever's in your mind. Mm -hmm. you know, right now, in this moment, there's nothing more important than this moment. Just if you need to, you can close your eyes. Mm -hmm. So you could probably feel it in your heart. It's like an expansion mm -hmm. in the chest. Just try just imagining, visualizing that. And I think what you visualize becomes the reality. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't even need to do that. You just mm -hmm. feel it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, well, Alan, you're just feeling it. I am feeling it. <laughs> but the big question is, what's the relationship between that and the ETs? That's really what I want to get to in these programs. How do we include this other level of consciousness? Because that's always been happening, and it's great. I recommend expansion, heart expansion. But um, the ET part of the equation is something, I think, new coming into our consciousness. Well, whatever I'm doing, this mm -hmm. energy that I'm working with, mm -hmm. is to me, is divine. Mm -hmm. And this higher vibration is, any higher vibration is divine energy. And so ETs have this energy, which means they are divine beings mm -hmm. that are connecting with us, that are, that are trying to raise our vibration mm -hmm. and our consciousness. And so we have so much stigma around these these beings that they're trying to hurt us, that they're trying to change right, us. a lot of fear. A lot of fear, and That's right? unnecessary. And I understand because when this energy comes in contact with people's, let's call, let's call it shit. <laughs> sure. Whatever um, you want to call it. You know, it, whatever their, their stuff, their, you know, it's basically a lot of ego stuff. When here. what comes in contact with that? This energy, because it's this, so pure. This divine energy. Yes, it's so pure. The vibration is so pure. When it comes in contact with people mm -hmm. that have a lot of stuff, pain, anger, ego, all that stuff, mm -hmm. it shakes their core. Mm -hmm. And the ego gets more and more and more angry or more and more scared or mm -hmm. whatever that mm -hmm. is. And so it, it wants to eject because it mm -hmm. doesn't want to be shut down. The ego wants to, say, shut off from the feelings. Is that what you're saying? No, it just wants to, sh it wants to shut out that energy because it says, no, you're going to, now you're going to shut me down. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so that, so this energy is so pure and so divine that it can, it can heal, it can activate, it can, it can do so many amazing things. It's magic. It is magic. That purity of feeling when I felt you tap into something, it is like a current that goes through the body. It's a current. So that's divine. So the ETs have that as well, you're saying. Absolutely. And of course, everybody has it. But I think the more evolved ETs yes. are living actually on that current of energy as opposed to food or even air. It's the current of frequency of vibration that actually is the life force that's activating those let's call them higher beings put it this way any gods that we know of today mm -hmm. any religious gods they all have connection to et relation like a relationship mm -hmm. or they are et themselves mm -hmm. so are you feeling those higher ets are you feeling that are you feeling some shift now in this time and age that you're tapping into a pure part of the divine, or are you just saying you're always there? Are they always here? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And a lot of us, you know, have guides, and you know, some of the people relate to them as angels, or I don't know how. Maybe they don't even. They can't. They just call them guides. Mm -hmm. But and those guides are usually. Um, something that comes from a higher dimension mm -hmm. and it might as well be an ET. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, okay, no, oh, someone just asking, are we taking questions? Yes. Yeah. Let's let's take questions. Yeah, we taking, can take questions from here. From a Facebook Live. And or where's the, from is here. there a chat on here? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep, yeah, live chat. Wait, so re sorry, repeat what that last thing that you just said was. So, so basically, a lot of us have like angels or guides or even gods. Mm -hmm. um, and, right. and a lot of us, you know, think that these beings are, uh, you know, are just sent by the creator God. But in, in essence, these beings are also ETs because they, what we think of that ETs are is usually like, you know, the, the grays, right? Right. And, and that's people, one race. Of yeah, beings. it's one race. And, and that race I have no relation to. <laughs> do you you don't, I do actually have a connection to mm -hmm. them. I don't. I usually have my relations mostly towards the humanoid beings, and then I have some relation to some of the like the higher conscious and the reptilians. Yes, but the the, mm -hmm. the little like lizard looking ones, the frog. I, one. I don't connect with those beings, <laughs> but but I think the greys are not bad. I think they're just misunderstood. Yes, they are. And I think they're here to for our genetics, which is a bit of a. Mm -hmm. um, an invasion, I suppose, but um, we're also here. To, they're also here to evolve us as we're here to evolve them. So these beings, what are the um, little um, reptilians here to do for you? <laughs> no, I mean, the, I have I've had some experience with the frog beings and the, I've never heard of the frog beings. Yes. <laughs> really? OK. <laughs> and um, actually, <clears throat> they're, just, they're very small beings, but these beings are very like they bring a lot of joy. Mm. A lot of joy into your they're life. Intelligent, high very intelligent, high, very intelligent, and they and they're they're very peaceful. But you know, there's all kinds of beings that we don't know of, it's, and I don't know of because I don't right. know the whole race. Of course, there are probably millions yeah. of beings just in our universe. Yeah. So it's like, who does our? It's like who do you bump into on the street? Yeah, it's exactly. like it's <laughs> like a frequency of consciousness. Yeah. Are you, you know? You can meet all sorts on the streets, or usually you're drawn to the people or the beings. Or, and now we've just opened a bigger playing field of what you're vibrating with. So, I think that's probably what it is with those other beings. But we're opening a different part of our brain that will vibrate with these extraterrestrial frequencies. And I think that's what you said about codes coming in, and then. Um, we start to activate more of ourselves. Let's see. I don't know if you know. So we um, have a question here by Paul, mm -hmm. and he's asking, "Do you have any suggestions around managing it, managing the ego, or getting rid of it completely?" Oh, that's good. You'll never get rid of the ego completely because the ego is what gives you the identification of yourself. Mm -hmm. So just managing it is basically you just allow the ego to give you um, sense of self. Mm -hmm. Right. There's right. just the sense of self, and everything else should flow from your heart. Mm. Really, that's how, that's how most ETs operate. It is. I I, I think they are more heart based and mm -hmm. and more intelligent. When you reach the higher ETs, another comment here by C W Chanter is, when you try to see every moment of life from the love point of view do things for the good of everybody and not for your profit, then your heart chakra is open and Kundalini will arise. Right? That's, is that a question or a statement? No, I think that's a <laughs> statement. But um, that happened to you, but your Kundalini arose sort of unexpectedly. Yeah, right? well, I had, you know, I, I went to an event where Abdi Electricity, you know, he, he he says he works with the Holy Spirit. Who does? Abdi. Oh, Abdi. Source Abdi. energy, whatever. And then, and so, you know, that energy flow through me um through all through the chakras one at a time right i mean you would have had that kundalini experience i was there i saw val like bouncing off the floor when her kundalini awoke it was <laughs> it was very dramatic you were screaming yelling mm, and pounding crying. the floor and crying but it was like a break it was fascinating i have mm. to say you could see this person like morphing and transforming your outer body to inhabit your inner body hmm. that's what i saw there so when the kundalini awakens it's usually time it may be a surprise it can be shocking but i think we're all coming to that on this planet we are we are and actually um 
I've been called to to kind of have a support group for people who haven't Kundalini awakening because oh, there's nice. so many people that are popping up now. Nice. And actually, when you do, when you do have a full blown Kundalini awakening, that's when ETs come to you. And what's the connection? Because or, that's what I'm trying to understand. Is what is there a connection between that body energy and the and the ETs? But what else were you going to say? Or, yes. Oh, well, what's that because, connection? Because Kundalini is not from the, from this earth. Mm, I see. Kundalini is like a cosmic force. It is a cosmic force. Oh, so when you tap the cosmic force, you're putting out a, like a cosmic signal. That's right. It's like you've turned right. on like a light bulb. Boop, the cosmic boop. signal. <laughs> and that also probably freaks people out because they haven't had the awareness of this. So that mm -hmm. explains a lot. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. The Kundalini is not of this earth because it yeah. is that same spiral that our galaxy, I think, uh, rotates around. That energy of the galaxy is the energy that's moving through mm -hmm. our bodies. Mm -hmm. And the awakening of the Kundalini mm -hmm. is the awakening of that mm -hmm. galactic spiral energy. Mm -hmm. I think I just thought. Yeah, I mean, for some of you that are like, um, you know, that are religious, mm -hmm. um, some, some people think that... Um, uh, like when they have Kundalini yoga, mm -hmm. in that sense, um, uh, they they tune into the their guru or whatever. Um, when you tune into your guru, you're you kind of you're you're blocking yourself right. from that higher gateway because the the guru kind of caps it instead of actually going all the way mm -hmm. up. So, right, but you know, in the old paradigm, the Piscean age, we're in the Aquarian age. The guru said, and I don't know if I believe it, would take on the karma of the student and transmute that fast. So they were the bridge, they weren't the block to those mm -hmm. other realms. But now, because we're all being activated, we don't need a middleman. We don't need priests or religious leaders yeah. or gurus. Mm -hmm. We are the direct conduit of source. That's mm -hmm. my feeling about this new time. And there's so much out there that if we, if you're, interested in um what's happening spiritually and involvement there's so many great teachers out there although i do have to say mm -hmm. that when you do have a kundalini awakening you do need guidance mm -hmm. right but you don't want someone to do it for you no you don't want someone to do you it want... for you you don't want someone to tell you that they're less than you you don't want someone to tell you that um you know whatever you're going through is is you know is, mm. is something you know less than what it is right because whatever you're going through is actually very powerful and it's you're on a i always say it's like a peeling of the onion you're on your way to get down to the core of who you really are and that's mm. amazing and the age of hierarchies one person being better than the other it's it's finished we are definitely all equal on that soul level yes we may not all have the same intelligence or, or wisdom yeah. or soul experience, but the potential and the the crystallization of that soul energy is absolutely, absolutely. the same for, that's a fact. for beings here or any beings. That's what that's what makes us equal to those ETs. They may have a, a much faster intelligence and awareness, but they're not greater than us. That's right. So someone asked me here on the chat, are ETs possibly humans from the future have come back? I think that's one possibility, but I think most ETs are also in a different time flow. And so I don't necessarily think they're us. The, the cosmos is full of life. It's vast. I mean, say every sun, I would say, every star has planets that have life. Maybe even stars themselves have life. We have yet to understand right. the cosmos. We understand just mm. we just such a small oh, absolutely piece, and such a small piece of our absolutely. potential. Absolutely, and actually, every day scientists are coming up with mm. new theories and, and things that mystics have known for years, mm, thousands right. of years, and they're finally saying, "Oh, look, we we discovered." It's like, okay, well, this has been this has been known for so many so long. And so many people like us, like us, regular people, have known mm -hmm. that there is something out there, mm -hmm. and then they're they're still trying to prove that there is there might be something out there, but we know that there is. Mm -hmm. Well, I've also been I've been emceeing at con uh, Contact in the Desert and uh, reading a lot of books. I just read this book called Dimensions by Jacques Vallée, and Jacques Vallée says if ETs just turn out to be beings from another planet that he'd be very disappointed because 
there's so much more. There's a paranormal element to ET contact. There's um, a dimensional idea. So UFOs are not just hardware from another another star. There's um, a multiple dimensional aspect to that consciousness. And also just being in my experience, just being in the presence of an ET shifts you. Absolutely. You, you do not think the same. It's <clears throat> like um, it's like feeling high or drunk. It's a distortion <laughs> of frequency. At least that's my experience. No, it's it's not a distortion. It's a purification. Well, maybe that's true. That's, <laughs> that's a good point. So this is the distortion. This is the distortion. Right, but that's the purification <laughs> of of your frequency right that's true but this is the frequency most people are used to so yeah. in order to get used to that frequency which i call a distortion which <laughs> may be your real frequency yes i think you have to practice lucidity we have mm. to practice um meditation meditation and dream state awareness and um being conscious in other realms, that's what it feels like as I tune into that, when I tune into those experiences I had, yeah, maybe distortion is not right, but it's altered. It's altered from the human frequency. That's right. It's, it's altered state of consciousness. And and we, most of us think that, you know, that it's, we're a little bit delusional. <laughs> well, you, you mean know? the ET population? Well, yeah, a lot of people think like, oh, you know, there's no proof that there are other, you know, life mm. on other planets. And a lot of, you know, I know I talk to all kinds of people, not just people like, you know, like us, but people, <laughs> but people that are, you know, that quote unquote normal. Mm. And, uh, and well, they, people don't have any idea. Basically. Yeah, they just, they just don't believe because mm. they've never seen. And, you know, I was like that. I'm, I'm the kind of person, if I don't see it, I can't believe it. Mm -hmm. So it shifted you. But when I, but it come, the, these beings come to me and mm -hmm. every time I, I ask for confirmation in that sense, you know, beings come to me, mm -hmm. including other beings. Like, you know, I grew up Catholic, mm -hmm. so I used to, I used to call out to Jesus all the time and say, okay, I don't believe in you. So come, you better come to me to prove to yourself to me. And, and what happened? I didn't, and I never saw him in that time period. And now I do, but in that time period, I never saw him. But then one day I heard the voice, I'm, I'm here. You, that was the voice of Jesus? Well, I just said, I'm here. And I just got so scared. And I just blocked it out. And I was like, oh, I don't want to hear this anymore. I don't want to, oh, don't want to go there. <laughs> but, well, because you opened up. And I think maybe Jesus, why not, comes yeah. to people just like other higher beings. And you know what? I realized that then I was never really scared. Mm -hmm. I was never, But I did have the conditioning to be scared. But well, that's our conditioning within our culture. You know, we right. watch television, we see the news. The news is saying, be scared, yes. build a wall, yes. block people out. I want to ask you, I want to ask the audience, mm -hmm. how many of you scared of ETs? Mm -hmm. Well, that's a good question. for it, But I don't even like to focus on that because if they focus on their fear, they will miss the um, the good news that is coming to them. So people have fear. Actually, I've had fear when I've met these greys, but I think, and it's traumatic, but I also feel like in some regressions, you can look at my regressions on my YouTube channel, New Realities, where I've gotten used to that altered state. So, you know, Plato has a saying, Do dogs also bark at what they don't know. Yes. So we're afraid of what we don't know. And this state of consciousness will generate fear because it's not known but if we go into the unknown with excitement then i think uh our whole orientation to these other beings or even jesus used to talk to him again maybe he has some news for you <laughs> but um this is what we're opening up to as a planetary human civilization the the fact that we are connected and we've been taught to not trust our mind that's right. Actually, I wanted to mention a uh, recent story. Mm -hmm. I was in Costa Rica, and there's a lot of activity there, UFO activity. And when the last time I was there, the last few times I was there, I had all kinds of experiences. Of course, the purer the place is, mm -hmm. the more easy activity there is. So I go, I have retreats upstate New York, and you know they they come there as well. But in Costa Rica, there they were there as well in the jungle. And um, so so what happened was I was calling them in. And I had 
maybe like five or six people around me. And this one girl comes up to us and she says, are you guys uh, calling in the ETs? Like making fun That's of funny, us. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I was so, and I was already, I had already announced that I said, oh, they're, they're trying to come through me. And I'm not one to channel. I don't like to channel. And well, if you're getting a message, yeah, I do it. well, yeah. I get the message, but then I don't want to really like be a vessel. Like I don't want to exit my body. You don't have to exit to channel though. You can just download. But anyway, so you said. So I said, I don't want to channel. Does somebody else want to channel? And then she heard that and she mm. goes, I, I, I'm willing. All of a sudden she was that with energy. Kundalini mm -hmm. went through the roof and she went, she went up on the floor and she was, she was vibrating and speaking all kinds of light language. And, and I, I too was so, mm -hmm. I was like, people had to hold my back because my whole body was shaking, like vibrating. Mm, that happens when you do your Kundalini but it's activation. it's the most powerful energy for me on anything the I've ever Kundalini. felt. Oh, that, that time yes. in Costa Rica. And I'll tell you why, because it's direct, it's from the direct source. Mm. They're operating from source, from that source. So you felt like a download of ET energy through the Kundalini. Absolutely, and every time I every time I have spurts of Kundalini. Mm -hmm. There's a question on okay. your Facebook chat about the movie War of the World started started the fear. Well, I have to say I've studied that, and that comes from a book that was written in the 1890s by H. G. Wells, when the first global sightings of what they would call airships in the 1890s started. And people projected fear because it was the unknown. And then Orson Welles did a War of the Worlds update, I think, in, was it 1932? And um, people are taught to be afraid of the, of the other, of the other. That's what the whole thing about building a wall is, being afraid of the other. But that's human. I think other realms, other ETs, they, they don't come from the idea of conquering, taking over. No. I mean, they haven't landed on the White House lawn because they don't want to interfere with the um, internal politics and the internal structures. We have to reach towards them. I mean, the appearance of these beings will lift us to possibilities, but they're not going to save us is really what I'm trying to say. Well, talk about that <laughs> yeah talk about that um my feeling is when i when i was up there in sirius i i there was a time and there is a war in the universe is there yes i i haven't been tuning into that and there is and but but it's only coming it's coming to an end at this point mm -hmm. what's the war between who and who it's the it's the light in the dark it's the you know it's it's like um uh, is it a war or is it um, a way to, mm, there's always duality and polarity, yes. so it's like, it's not necessarily good and evil, it's to here to make ourselves stronger, maybe. Well, everything is, everything has a purpose, yes? Maybe that's not your opinion, yes, but it's okay. It, that's the higher, that's the higher, um, you know, the mm -hmm. higher knowing, mm -hmm. that everything does have a purpose. But on, on this on this plane, there is, you know, because we talk about things from higher intelligence. And that, yes, it has purpose. So the war, but, but war, I understand what you're saying. The war between dark and light yes, is ending because... Because the, we are re, we're coming to a point, a new era of, the, of this spiritual age, where we're starting to move towards um, being more enlightened enlightened beings here on the planet and then it's going to take a while about right. 200 years or so but but we're but we're we're getting there we're starting we're to get it. there and everybody's starting to pop open and wake and waking up right that is the great thing how was it when the earth woke up when humanity woke up Twelve thousand so, years ago or and now yeah and now but i think what is happening is that this um push against dark and light, if you want to call it that, will be replaced by this creative expression. I think that's the time we're moving into. So instead of like having wars, we will have um, calling on some inner source to express greater music, greater songs, greater feelings, greater emotions. We've been as down and as low as we can get as humanity on this planet. I think 
when we activate this creative expression, the higher senses, if some might call that kundalini as well, start to activate new feelings. So as we graduate to being more feeling, like, you, like you're saying in the heart expansion, more creativity starts. Yes. And this is the transformation yes. of humanity. This is what I call the flowering of humanity. Absolutely. And you know, the, the thing is, is that we're going to start to stray away from jobs that um, have only to do with, you know, making money, like finance or, right. or th these kind of jobs that like, that really don't serve the greater humanity. You know, it's just to make, it's just for, you know, deep pockets, you know, just for people, corporations and well, that, all that will start to kind of go away. Right. And I think some people are afraid of uh, artificial intelligence, but I think those machines will do the jobs people don't want to do, like open doors. I mean, I mean, <laughs> and, and or ridiculous things that people are enslaved to do and they're missing that divine spark that they yeah, like working factories and things. Yeah, all that awful stuff that people have been enslaved to just to survive will start to be transformed into creative potential. And that's going to be a huge shift. Imagine if everyone is a songwriter, a poet, a painter, a dancer. Right. To, uh, and, and that's how it was. And we're yeah. creating, creating technology that, that heals, creating technology that uh, opens portals, creating technology that... Um, you know, that allows for us to communicate better. Right. It's what Bashar says. We're moving into a planet where everyone will follow their highest excitement. Whatever that is, we are living. And I think that is the ultimate. What is your highest excitement? Each moment, what do you want to do to serve yourself and the greater humanity? We've been put into boxes because of dogma, religious, political, yes. social dogma. Yes. And... And there's a great time coming. I mean, we're working through a couple of rough spots here, but, but we're, we are. We are. We're awakening. Everything is is shifting and moving towards a more feminine energy, mm -hmm. and and you know, there's there's a lot of catalysts right now that are that are you know pushing that forward um, on on the earth right now, and that's good. That's a good thing. But the thing is, it's not just for the females of the earth that need to be pushed up. It's also the masculine. I hope the, everyone, the, the, the masculine, yeah. uh, the feminine within the masculine to be pushed up. And we need to, we need to kind of come together. This is the time we need to come together, the male and the female to come together in, in mm. harmony, not fight the female fighting the male. Mm. It's for that power. Right, because the women have learned how to be men, right. okay, and they then fight the That's male right. part of them, and mm. the, the male part denies their own That's female right. part. Right. So we've been confused. Actually, let's do our next talk about that balance mm. of the feminine and masculine, the female and male. And that's really what the diamond consciousness is, mm. is to access all parts of ourselves. It's mm. that multifaceted um, uh, mind, the way that we think in the multifaceted way, to open up different parts of our brain where we can access the masculine and the feminine energy. And we need to become balanced. Not so much in a way that, you know, we lean towards one and another. Maybe a little bit more, but not so much. Right. If you're feminine, mm -hmm. you can be the feminine mm -hmm. and embody more of that feminine power. Yeah. I mean, we, I could recognize that part in me, but I want it to be expressed mm -hmm. in you mm -hmm. where I can feel that. Mm -hmm. I can see that and sense that. I mean, I, I think I'm very feminine in the way I present myself, but... but but even having this discussion is not very feminine. No, it's a people. mental thing. Right. It's mm -hmm. a it's a more of a you know what I t what I talk about sometimes seems very masculine. Mm -hmm. But, but um, and even in my presentation as well. Right. But the heart opening, bringing people into yes. that, is a feminine that, type experience. If we want to put things in that sort of boxes, box, yeah. I think. We're moving beyond that as we become integrated. That's right. And, and then, we need to merge those two. And be, and that's what really Kundalini is all about. It's those two energies swirling up and down the body. And that we are merging those energies. And that everything in our life, in, even in lovemaking or, uh, you know, coming together with a friend or a female or male, whatever that is, using those energies and merging those energies together. Mm -hmm. Not just 
not just I'm the female, you're the male, but using my feminine, my masculine, mm -hmm. and meeting your feminine, your masculine. Right, and that's the merging of the Kundalini, mm -hmm. and somehow that's related to ETs. Absolutely, it is, and actually. ETs, people ask me all the time, do ETs have sex? Do they? No. <laughs> they don't? I think they do have a merging of, uh, of energy bodies. They have a merging of energy bodies. They have... Um, well, it depends how physical they are. I think if they are still evolving through a physical realm, they might have intercourse. Well, they're not... They're usually in light bodies. Mm -hmm. So, they, how could you? You know, mm -hmm. you can have... You ha they have a divine mergence. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's how they reproduce. But they don't have... The same kind of, you know, sex. That Physicality. Yeah. And, you know, if you think about Tantra mm -hmm. um, or, or um, was it Taoist? The uh, Taoist practices, yes. yes. These, see, these these were also integrated through ET um, intelligence. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they, they received this information from the gods. Right. And the true Tantric Taoist practices was the merging with the other, where there was no separation between the bodies. But I also think and i do want to pursue this in another discussion is that um there's very specific energies of the feminine the feminine is nurturing and the masculine is protecting you know so when we have those yes. in balance within a partnership or within yourself you can function in the world in more harmony yes so do you think ets are are gender male female the ones that you've met they are gender Mm -hmm. But once they get into a body, well, they're in their light body. But when they're light bodies, bodies yeah, no, there's no gender in the light body, which is the soul. Mm -hmm. The soul, the gender, the soul has no gender. Maybe everybody has their own gender. Like everybody's frequency is unique to their light being. So we could say there's an infinite amount of genders because it's expressed through each one. That's just my idea. But I think there is a duality here on planet Earth that we're resolving, and um, I think it will happen. Mm. What were you going to say? No, I, I mean I think this this, um, this conversation about ETs and what the, you know a lot of people want to know the details, but it, it really doesn't matter uh, if you want to if you want to know more about them, learn more about yourself. Mm. Well, that's what one of the comments on your Facebook Live, it's the light and dark within us. Yeah, we all have light and dark within us. We all have the divine and we have the human that wants something just for itself. And we forget that there's other people. And then we transmute that by saying, no, we're here to serve. And this is the also battle within ourselves, you mm -hmm. know. Do you give people on the street money every time they ask mm -hmm. I mean those are people in need or you say no I mean we do have to be more selfless I think so maybe that's the practice to, to mm -hmm. serve and to look at yes. what we're not um, sharing in ourselves yes actually that's one thing that they say all the time is that they need you need to do things to help serve humanity the greater mm -hmm. good and and of course yourself so once you once you serve others then you're serving yourself mm -hmm. because then you're actually in your heart all the time and that is serving yourself right because everyone is you so let's it's almost four o'clock here in new york so let's, let's just take some questions and okay some questions then we'll wrap up yep. and i might do a stream tonight from an et round table discussion i'm having downtown I'll see what the technology is there uh, what questions do you have? Oh, Dan Topkis is watching. Hey, Dan. <laughs> but, um, do you want to scroll? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Here, I work in a male centric macho industry. It's typical of the Western society floors. I completely welcome change coming. I find out just soul lines up better with women intuitive. I find my soul lines up better with women. A lot of men intuitive. are feeling that. I think that was that a man or a woman? Okay. Well, I think there is a shift to be more intuitive, to be more um, open. Culture, culture trains the left brain to conform, to expect your gender roles. That's true. So we have to get out of those boxes that we've been conditioned to. I always carry some change in my pocket. If a homeless person asks, I give it to them. But their minimum rate is 50 cents. 
what should you, USA do about the big homeless problem in major cities? I think just love those beings the best you can. They are in pain and hurting and need to need to be cared for if we can. That's what I say. Okay, how about um, any ET questions? I don't know. Oh, I just want to say hello from Norway. Norway is one of my favorite countries. So, uh, <laughs> thanks for tuning in from Norway. Um, well, why don't we make this like a regular thing? That um, yes, galactic battles are going on over there by Kat, Kat, Kathy mm -hmm. Alien currently on screen. No <laughs> I'm not scared of them. Okay. Mm. So tell people. So what, let's just let's just um. To let you guys know that this is going to be an ongoing podcast, yes. something out there with Alan and I, and um, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe we'll plan on doing a retreat soon. Mm -hmm. um, I think though, talking about this helps me open up and other people. But we're going to say sorry. Yeah, I mean, more. the point the point of this podcast is to open people up, educate people, um, allow them to you know to kind of fulfill Fancy, you know, even if you're not interested in ETs, maybe just kind of you just imagine what it could be like mm. through whatever we're talking about. Right. Exactly. But I do think if you listen it, to yourself, you'll there's a different vibration coming to the earth. And this is a higher frequency wanting to open up a new neurological understanding. It's like that story about the people see on the store are not seeing the boats coming in to the shore because they didn't know what to look for. When we start to get messages, we don't know how, what that is. So just be open to a different current and frequency that's coming through and don't shut it out. Don't think you're going crazy because you're not going crazy. You're shifting your receiver which is our brain to pick up new frequencies it's like it's like a radio station and when we and there's frequencies we have yet to dial in and that's what well that's what you tapped into that's what i'm starting to tap into that's what a lot of us so don't be afraid when you hear someone say i'm here right yes don't be afraid and and you'll not start to notice more and more disclosure as as the years go by um, I, I started to realize that there was so much disclosure happening in 2011, and I was like, wow. I yeah. think as we disclose the frequency to ourselves, which is why we're doing this, mm -hmm. because we're just sharing our experience and putting out questions. It's sort of yeah. as we disclose the frequency to ourselves, which is why we're doing this. Mm -hmm. The difference between ETs and ultra terrestrials. Well, I think ultra terrestrials, you know, they're just connected to the, the source. 